Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 43, Exception Handling Abuse. In this session, we'll learn what exception handling abuse is all about, and we'll also see how to prevent exception handling abuse. Now, we know that an exception is nothing but an unforeseen error that occurs when a program is running. For example, let's say we have an application that reads data from a database and displays that maybe on a web page. And when it's doing that, there is a database error. So obviously to handle that we use you know exception handling techniques. But many a times I have seen people using exception handling incorrectly to implement the program logical flow, which is extremely bad and that's what is termed as exception handling abuse. Probably we'll look at an example which will make that clear. So let's say you know I want to write a simple program which can divide two numbers and display the division result and that's pretty simple to do so first let's prompt the user to enter their numerator so console dot right line and we'll ask the user to enter numerator so please enter numerator now once we ask the user to enter the numerator he will enter the numerator so we need a variable which can hold that so we use the console.readLine method to read the input from the user. But since readLine reads that in the form of a string, we need to convert that to integer. So we can make use of convert class. So convert.toInt32. So what is this going to do? It's going to convert that to integer and store in that numerator variable. So similarly, let's ask the user to enter denominator. And once the user enters the denominator, we want to read that from the console, convert that to integer, and store it in this denominator variable. And obviously, we want to calculate the division result, which is equal to numerator by denominator. And then we finally print the result back to the user. So, result is equal to result all right now if we run this program it's pretty simple uh, it will ask the the user to enter two numbers let's say numerator is 10 denominator is 2 result is 5 it works but then there are several reasons why this program can fail if you look at this you know it's asking us to enter a numerator the first reason why this program might fail if I enter you know alphabets instead of numbers what this program will do it will try to read that from console and try to convert that. Now, when this convert dot two in thirty two method, you know, tries to convert the string, it cannot convert that to integer. It will throw an exception, format exception. So when I do this, look at that, you get a format exception. So obviously, to handle that, what we can do, we can put this in a try block. So basically, what you want your program to do is, you know. When you read that input from the console, you want to check if that is in a valid format rather than using exception handling like this. So, for example, format exception, let's say FE, and what we do, console.writeLine, please enter a number or only numbers allowed, whatever. Okay. Um, we don't have to use this object here because we are not using that for any purpose. So now if I run this, so please enter numerator. So if I enter alphabets, then what's going to happen? This line will try to read that, convert that to integer, which will fail. A format exception will be thrown. The catch block will catch that exception and prints this message to the user. Okay, that looks fine but there are other reasons as well why this program can fail for example it's asking me to enter a numerator now I enter a very big number now you know that an int 32 an integer can only hold you know a, a number of certain size and this is definitely big for an integer variable to hold so when I press enter what's gonna happen console.readline will read that number and when it tries to convert that to an integer, obviously it cannot convert that to an integer because it overflows. Okay, what happens if you pour two liters of water in a one liter can? It's going to overflow. Similarly, if you try to, you know, store a huge number in a variable of smaller data type, obviously that's going to overflow. So we get an overflow exception. 
So obviously to handle this, probably we have to have another catch block. Maybe catch overflow exception. And what we want to do here is we want to tell the user, okay, you entered a number that makes sense, but that entered number should be between, you know, the ranges that an integer variable can hold. And what is that range? How do we find out? Let's see that. So console dot right line, and then we want to say only numbers between. That's the minimum value, and maximum value are allowed. So what is the minimum value that an N32 variable can hold? It's very easy to identify that, to find that out. You don't have to remember, uh, you know, on top of your head. So for example, if I say that in 32, we know that in 32 is a value type and it's a structure. So the IntelliSense shows that. So now when I right click on that and say go to definition, look at this. This int32 has a constant, a public constant variable of type, uh, minimum value and maximum value which will basically tell what's the minimum value it can hold and what's the maximum value it can hold. So basically you can use these two constants to get your value. So minimum value and in 32 dot max value. So that's it. So now if we run this and then if we try to enter a very big number which in uh, you know an integer variable cannot hold obviously it will throw an overflow exception this catch block handles that and then shows this meaningful message to the user so only numbers between that range are allowed and there is another reason why this program can fail as well let's see now please enter a numerator I enter a valid number please enter a denominator I enter zero now we know that in mathematics it's illegal to divide a number by zero which will lead to infinity and a program you know cannot withstand that number so obviously uh, you know divide by dividing by zero is is illegal so the application throws divide by zero exception but our application you know cannot handle that exception so when we do that we get a divide by zero exception so obviously to handle that we need another catch block let's say so catch divide by zero exception and obviously what we can display here is denominator cannot be zero so we'll display that meaningful message to the user denominator cannot be zero so now if the user enters zero as the denominator then he will get that meaningful message and apart from these three if there is any other exception then it's safe to have another catch block so we will just say console.writeline ex.message maybe here we will have a reference variable all right so now our program looks okay now it's it can you know basically handle any type of exception now I run this, whatever is the case, you know, this program doesn't break. But then if you look at the look at what we have done in this program, this is actually wrong. I mean we are abusing exception handling. You know, instead of using format exception, overflow exception, and divide by zero exception uh, to handle these scenarios, okay, um, I would say use error checking mechanisms like Instead of using convert.2 in 32, use int.tryparse method. And then if the tryparse is not successful, you know that there is something wrong with the input. And based on that, you know, display the meaningful use messages to the user. And similarly, instead of allowing, you know, the divide by zero exception to occur and then catching that, what you can basically do is check if the denominator is zero after, after you have successfully parsed that and then show that message to the user. All right. What we will do is actually we will see how to, you know, prevent this exception handling abuse with an example in a next session. So I, I hope in this session you have understood, you know, this way of implementing programming logic. You know, here what am I doing? I'm using format exception basically to tell, okay, your, your entered number should only be a 
your entered value should only be a number and similarly to tell him the range i'm using overflow exception but instead of that once you try to parse that based on the result you can basically tell whether if he has entered a number or not whether if it falls within a specific range or not similarly if the denominator is zero you can straight away tell the user okay dividing by zero is not allowed rather than allowing the divide by zero exception to occur and then telling the user you know within that exception block okay denominator cannot be zero so 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 we have to prevent this and we will see that in our next session on this slide, you can see uh, ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.